Here's the deal with search and rescue stuff. You know, we've been talking about all weekend, we've been talking about survival. We've been talking about how to deal with small periods of time in order to get yourself by to the next moment in time, right? Whether it's water, whether it's fire, whether it's shelter, whatever it is. But that whole goal, and eventually, hopefully, being self-reliant, all of that gets you to the point to where if you're in a bad situation, you can be found. Because, you know, other than that, you know, three or four days, you're going to be you're gonna be struggling if you don't have more skills than you picked up today, right? Or I said, should say this weekend. So the first thing I'll talk about is planning. Um, I would tell you that every single search and rescue operation that I've been on had something to do with ill planning. Um, we talked a lot about planning, whether it's getting your fire ready, right? We know now everybody here should know after day one, look, if you're, if you're going to go out and you're going to build a fire, you're not just going to get your lighter ready and grab up some grass next to you and start a fire, right? You're going to take the time, you're going to plan that fire out. You're going to get your tender, you're going to get your fuel, you're going to get all that stuff together so you're ready to go. Going on an outing, going doing something outdoors is the same way. You have to plan beforehand. Um, if you do that, that really helps the possibility of you being rescued if you're in a bad situation. Maybe you have a mechanical injury and go down or you get ill and go down. But also, that plan <coughs> helps us as rescuers. When we go out looking, it helps us to be able to find you. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of examples as we go along. Um, I've been a caver for years, and I love doing that. Um, and Darren, you guys met Darren. He was here. He had to leave a little early. Um, he helps out with, with our group. Uh, Darren and I have been caving for years, and one of our rules before we go caving, and it's caves we've been in our whole lives. Some of them are huge. You know, every area, every nook and cranny of these things. We've been trained for, for rescue and cave. We know what we're doing. But every time before we go into a cave, the first phone call we make is to a buddy of ours, a cave rescue guy. Hey, we're going in potato cave. We'll be in there from this time to this time. If you don't hear from us, that's where we're at. If we don't call him when we come out, he's ringing our phones off the hook because that's our plan. That's our backup. If we don't get found, if we don't we don't come out, that's our guy. Also, tell my wife where I'm at. My wife might not know where that cave is. She might not not know exactly. But if she tells Chavez, who's a you know a, a police officer, she says, "Hey, look, my husband didn't come back. He went out caving this morning. He was in Potato Cave." He's like, "Oh yeah, I know where Potato Cave is. This is down here, right?" So that planning is a huge part of what you're doing. How many people this weekend have been cold? <laughs> right? Okay. Looking at what you've done now, and some of you guys have probably went to Walmart. I know there's a couple people that didn't bring any sleeping bags, maybe had to do that, right? Hi. Yeah, you guys? Okay, what'd you bring with you? A wool blanket? It's okay. Yeah, okay, you thought that'd be enough, right? It wasn't, right? <laughs> so if you guys didn't have Walmart, you have been real cold all weekend, right? So planning, knowing the environment you're going into. You know, don't wear... Uh, fatigues and, and, and freaking sand boots to go in the, the nasty, wet, cold weather, right? Um, it's about knowing what you've got ahead of you. That's, that's the number one thing you got to worry about in search and rescue, planning. Everything you pack should be a plan. If you guys ever heard of Aaron Ralston and um, the guy that got trapped, you guys probably saw the movie or maybe read the book. Uh, one of the things that he says that he regretted, one, was food and water. And a good knife. And a good knife. He said, don't buy a Chinese multi-tool. Never again, right? Of course, you guys know he cut his arm off that thing. Gerb. Gerb, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. So, so plan. Plan. Have the right equipment for the right job, the right tools for the right job. Pack more than what you need. Um, risk versus benefit. I'll talk about that for a second. Look, if you're in a situation, we've been talking to you guys about this is how to survive this situation. You know, you guys have built your way up last night. You did 15 minutes, uh, or let's see, you had 20 minutes, and you were able to, to take water to a boil. You're able to get a sustainable fire, and you're able to get shelter. If you had that, you're going to make it through the night. You're good to go. But you have to, at some point, weigh out those risks versus benefits. Um, for instance, with kids, we always teach hug a tree. You guys may have heard that before, you know. Uh, guys, if you're out somewhere and you get lost, first thing you do is sit down and hug a tree and wait. Okay? That's the number one thing that causes problems is where people try to wander. Um, it makes our job a heck of a lot harder, yeah. especially when we're trying to track people. Um, so sit down, wait, calm down. You know, um, I talked to some guys this weekend about mindset, about that, about having the, the mindset to survive, the mindset to be able to deal with what you're, you're overcoming. If you freak out, if you start worrying about time, if you start worrying about what you've got and what you don't have, about getting somebody, you know, finding you or not finding you, you get all that stuff going, the psychology of it, crushes you, you're done. You've got to you've got to be able to to weigh out those things, risk versus benefit. Do I need to uh, you know I know the the highways north from here. You know I know this area really well. Is it is the risk versus benefit? Is it okay to take that walk and go, or is it a steep incline? You need to wait till morning so you don't break every bone in your body trying to get down this this cliff or whatever that you're going down. You have to weigh those things out. Um, we had a guy um, 
Well, I'll get to that in a second. I'm, I'm going to talk to you guys about some examples from some rescue attempts that we've done. Um, I say attempts, I should say rescue. That's not good to say attempts. <laughs> <laughs> we try. Yeah. Uh, well, we've had a couple of attempts. Uh, um, Jeremy brought up a really good point, um, talking about that orange bat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, when I come across over here, second row, I saw you guys all walking up the hill, actually all of you, but most of you guys are wearing these big orange bags. You can see from a mile away. Signaling and, and having those kit items in that bag prepared for a problem is really, really important. It goes back to that planning stage. How many people in here bought a uh, one of the blankets this weekend? One of the, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You're talking about the reusable space blankets? <coughs> yeah, reusable space blankets, the grabber blankets. Yeah. yeah. How many people bought green? How many people bought orange? Okay. How much? You bought a green one? Yeah. How much more was the green one than the orange one? It was the same price. Okay. How much more was the orange one than the green one? Same price. Why buy green if you can buy orange, right? Not only does it help you if you drop your gear, but it is a great way, anything you buy, anything I put in my kit that I can get in bright orange or bright mm -hmm. colors, that's what I want to do. Uh, it may not look tactical. You know, we talked about that at the beginning of, uh, of the class. It may not look tactical, and that's the mindset. Everybody in here seems like they're green, <coughs> green brown, or black. But it doesn't matter when it, when it comes down to it. This guy right here is going to be found 10 times faster than most of us in here right now. Um, we wear camouflage. Camouflage is for concealment, right? Not for rescue. Um, so those kit items are really important. You know, you, you, if you've got a bag, that orange bag, man, you put that to where it can be seen. You're walking through the woods or you're sitting down, a helicopter flies over, they're going to see it. Last night, some of you guys were around when we got a call out. I had a uh, search call out from back home and my guys were calling me. Everything was going nuts because they have never went out uh, with our full team. And so they call and the first thing that I say is we send an investigator to the house and we start gathering information. What, what kind of clothes were they wearing? What kind of experience do they have? You know, were they dressed for the weather? Were they not dressed for the weather? Were they sick? Did they have a, any any major health problems? Uh, what kind of equipment did they have? Uh, just so happens these guys were meth cooks. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know what kind of equipment Woo! they had. But, uh, they but one of the first things I said was to call. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? They could both fire. They could. Yeah. 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 Uh, but the first thing I told my guy was call FLIR. You know, the helicopters have FLIR. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's uh, They're able to look through a camera and see different degrees of heat depending on the person. And so that's an amazing technology that we have. Um, it's we do have a hand, uh, an on ground hand version, but it didn't work as well, right? But the first thing I said was, have the dude start a fire, have him do it right now, and that goes back to that mindset. <coughs> you guys aren't going in the woods. If you're going in the woods, I bet you every one of you guys after this weekend are going to take a big kit, right? But let's say you're not going in the woods. Let's say you're just planning a day at work. Let's play. Let's say you're driving down a road and, and you're planning. You know what? I go through this patch of woods every day. Do you have a knife with you? Do you have a lighter with you? Because that fire, in seconds, we fly a FLIR over top of that, we're going to see that from miles away because of that heat. Uh, you know, everybody thinks about fire in daytime, and that's it. And, and Jamie's going to talk to you about using smoke. Smoke isn't great at night, but fire and heat is really good at night, right? You can see the light. You can see if we fly FLIR over, you can see it. Uh, so, so when you guys are planning your kit items, when you guys are putting a bag together, you need to change your mindset <clears throat> completely. Because I guarantee you, if we dumped out everybody's bags right now, most people's stuff, they buy green, they buy black, they buy uh, coyote tan because it's it's the cool thing, it's the tactical thing, it's what everybody thinks. Or maybe you're a hunter and you think everything's got to be the deer. I don't need the deer to see my underwear, you know. But look, you need to plan for this. You need that's the big thing. That's going back <coughs> to step one. Not only are you telling people where you're going, you're doing all that stuff. You need to plan your kit around needing to be rescued and what you're going to have to do. That orange backpack Jeremy's talking about, all that stuff. You got a bandana? Why can't it be orange? Dave sells orange ones. Mm -hmm. The reason. other thing you guys can do, and, and real quick, just let me throw this in there, because it's, it's one of the things that I do, and when I teach this discussion, I do I show this, but go to Walmart or Kmart or someplace like that, and get yourself like a triple XL orange t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Throw it in the bottom of your bag and forget it's there. Oh, and then if something awesome. happens when you're out hunting, or you're out stealthing around and you don't want to be seen, <clears throat> but something happens to you, you can rip that orange t-shirt out of your backpack and throw it over anything that you're wearing. Even if you're wearing a big coat, you can throw that triple XL orange T-shirt on top of it, and now you can be seen from miles away when you want and, to be seen. And like he said, you throw that on, and, and I'm sure many of you out, especially during the night now, have wished you could just sit down by a tree and take a break. You know, and let's say you're out and you're exhausted, and you do sit down, and let's say you fall asleep, and the search and rescue come through, and they're hollering for you, and they're whistling and whatever. And, and Brandon's got a good story that goes with this. You know, they are able to see you, and you could be physically incapacitated. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just propped up against tree. But if you're dressed like this, good chance they're going to walk right by you. Mm -hmm. 
orange. And when we've done testing with that, all of our SAR guys, we wear bright orange. You know, all the other officers are like, oh, those are, I can't believe we're wearing a big orange shirt. Let me tell you. That's the only way we're going to go into the woods is those big orange shirts because we can see each other forever. If we're doing a hasty and we get our hasty team out, you can see those guys. It's, if you can get them up on a hill, you can see those guys for a mile. Um, let's talk about signaling for a minute. And, and again, Jamie's going to go into to a particular type of signaling. But let's talk about a couple of things. When, when you guys think of signaling, give me a, an example of signaling for rescue. Mirror. What do you think? Fire. Fire, okay. That'll work. Talk about that one. Signal mirror. Signal mirror. What else? Flashlight. Flashlight? Okay. In the, oh, in the dark. Whistle. What is it? Whistle. Whistle. Wow, that was good. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. X's. Okay. X's. Yeah. Contrast. Contrast. Movement. Good. Movement. Good. You guys are hitting on the main things, but let's let's break these down for a second. You know, we talked about fire. Fire's great. Fire not only helps you survive, it is a great signaling device both in daytime and nighttime. <clears throat> Again, nighttime you got that heat, you got that light, and daytime you got smoke, and Jamie's gonna talk about how to improve upon that. <coughs> but but here's the thing, if you don't know how to use these devices, you know, probably a lot of people in here have a, sig a, a signal mirror. I bet you that you really not practice with it that much. Most people have it. It wasn't until I actually broke mine out of the plastic and started playing with it that I realized how hard those things are actually to use. Um, you've got to practice with it. You've got to get a good sunny day. You've got to make your V. You've got to make a signal. You don't need to just flash it. Just bump. I wonder if you saw me. Eh. Uh, because how many guys have ever been either in an airplane, if you've, if you've flown before, or driving down the road even, and see a car uh, mirror, and it, mm -hmm. it flashes back in your eyes, and you're like, what is that? Okay, pilot, that, that may be all they do. A guy driving down the road, that may be all he does, is just think that's somebody, you know, with, a, with the, their mirror on their car flashing, or, you know, who knows, something else. You have got to be specific with it. You need to do SOS. Everybody knows SOS, right? Dit, 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 da, 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 dit, 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 right? Three quick, three long, three quick. You need to be able to do that. You need to be able to do something that says, I'm not a car mirror, okay? I need help, right? And so if you're going to carry a, a signal mirror, which is, you know, it's great. There's other devices that you can use in your kit that will do something similar. But if that's what you're going to do, you need to practice with it. And you need to understand that it's not just, hey, you know, hey, flash down here. You've got to be able to use it right. Somebody mentioned whistles and actually blew one. Whistles are great, but they're not perfect. Whistles are really good for close contact. You guys, more than likely this weekend, at some point, we've blown a whistle and you've not heard it. It's taken two whistles to get everybody here. More than likely you're on Jim's team. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where he's at. I'm waiting to get my kit with something. Uh, but look, whistles are great, but you need good whistles, first of all. Don't, don't buy cheap whistles. Buy a, a whistle that is built for search and rescues. Mm -hmm. And look, let me tell you a quick story. We had a, we had a rescue uh, of a guy, a rescue operation that we got called out in the middle of the night. A uh, guy was up with his buddies. The guy's a diabetic. Um, they're up hanging out, hiking, uh, looking for ginseng. And uh, sang. There we go. Um, and uh, they're up there all night into the you know early hours. Well, they leave. And uh, the guy says, I need to sit down for a minute. He's like, okay, sit down. The guy takes maybe steps from here to the other end of that pole over there, turns around, his buddy's gone. Just like he vanished out of thin air. And so this is the story we get. So we go up and we look and we see where the guy had sat down. We tracked him, tracked the guy for a mile and a half into the woods. And the whole time, my hasty team is blowing whistles. Blowing those whistles as loud as they can, yelling, hey, hey, you know. You'd think we'd be heard, right? We walked between here and the bushes over there from the guy. He never heard us. We missed him that night. And actually, the next morning, guy gets up and walks to a cabin. Now, there was some inebriation involved in that. But <coughs> the fact that we were blowing those whistles and screaming as loud as we can, this guy doesn't even roll over. And he wants to be found. He's not trying to keep from being found. So whistles are great, but they're not as good as you think they are. Don't rely solely upon that. Don't think, that's going to be my rescue device. I'm going to throw that in there. That's all I'm going to have to rescue. It's not enough. You've got to get that kit mentality that I have multiple items in my kit. Um, that show movement, right? That show contrast. That's what you need to do. You've got to say, hey, I'm not a, I'm not a stick, I'm not a tree, I'm not a rock, I'm somebody that needs help.